fresh polls are in and it's bad news for Kamala Harris. The more she shows her face in the lead up to the election, the worse her numbers get. And that is sending the Democrats into a tailspin. Sky News All-Stars Gabriella Power, Greg Sheridan and Danica DiGiorgio take a look at the latest polls and the fallout from Kamala Harris's disastrous media blitz. Kamala Harris went on a media blitz last week, but it turns out she probably should have just stayed home, reveals Sky News host Gabriella Power. We are just three weeks away from election day and early voting is underway. And as we get closer to the finish line, it's clear that Donald Trump is gaining support and Kamala Harris, well, her popularity is declining. Let's look at the latest NBC News poll. It has Donald Trump and Kamala Harris both receiving 48% support from registered voters and 4% say that they're undecided. This latest poll is certainly enough to have the Harris campaign very nervous. September's NBC News poll had Harris leading Trump by five points. So what's changed? Well, Kamala Harris has done a media blitz and it appears the more that people have been able to see of her, they're going, oh, actually, no thank you. No thanks. And even fresh CNN polling confirms the Democrats' worst fears. We have some new CNN reporting today about what is going on behind the scenes inside the Harris campaign and more broadly among Democrats who are growing more and more anxious about a 2016 redux. CNN's Priscilla Alvarez joins me now. Priscilla, uh, we were just joking here at the table that anxious Democrats happen on a day that ends in Y. <laughs> but this is, uh, this is something that perhaps is, is warranted. And again, another CNN host was flabbergasted with polling that suggests Donald Trump is winning when it comes to the black male vote. And, and sometimes there's a trend line that I never noticed before and make me go, whoa. This is one of them, all right? This is the Democratic margin among black men under the age of 45 in presidential elections. You go back to November of 2012, what do you see? You see Obama by 81. Clinton only won him by 63. Then we're all the way down to Biden last time around by 53. A tremendous drop already. And then you take a look at the average of the most recent polls and Kamala Harris is up by only 41 points. That is about half the margin that Obama won them by back in November of 2012. And this, I think, is, you know, when Barack Obama goes in last week when he was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, essentially talking to young black men, he made it seem like it was a Kamala Harris specific problem. Uh-uh. This is part of a long-standing yeah. trend of young black men moving away from the Democratic Party. And Kamala Harris is just the latest to face that magnitude of black, younger black men going towards the Republican. That was, was mo most interesting here is the trend line and where some of the biggest drops happened or already happened in this case. How about black men overall? How about black men overall? It's part of the same picture, you know. We're looking once again at younger black men. It looks like the worst Democratic performance since 1960, since JFK versus Richard Nixon. It's the same thing among black men overall. Daily Wire host Ben Shapiro doubled down on this, saying the brat has worn off for Kamala Harris, and that is reflecting in her polling numbers. About a month ago, Kamala Harris was leading by five percentage points in the NBC News national poll. Today, they are dead tied. 48 to 48. That is a five point shift in favor of President Trump since just one month ago. So what exactly happened here? Was it that Donald Trump suddenly started overperforming? Did he radically change his campaign? The answer there, of course, is no. Donald Trump is perfectly consistent. He's been campaigning in the same fashion today that he was like 10 years ago at this point. So what exactly changed? The answer is the brat wore off. The air is out of the balloon. But despite the clear evidence, the hosts of The View are still playing the blame game. I think we have the press to blame for a lot of this about, you know, Whoopi, you always say you don't believe in polls. Mm. I'm with you now because I'm reading the press. First it was Kamala's not doing enough press. Then she goes on this huge press tour. She was here with us. I thought she was fantastic. She was energetic. The crowd went wild. It was electric. CNN, Democrats go anxious. Axios, blue wall blues. Fox, Dems are scared to death. No, Dems are not scared to death. Den Dems are pumped. What I would like the press to talk a little bit more about is Trump is in hiding. He didn't do the 60 Minutes uh, interview. He does not want to do another debate. 
he's in mental decline. Obama's speech was captivating in Pittsburgh, yet instead of talking about that, we're talking about uh, what he said before the speech to black men. I think that the media has to do a much better job than what they're doing. Kamala Harris's fall from grace came after her media blitz, where she was slammed for her tone deafness and decision to do fluffy interviews during a natural disaster. As we know, Kamala Harris was hiding from the media, but suddenly the VP found time to go on a 40 minute podcast, Call Her Daddy, which is known for sex conversations. And she recorded that podcast while residents in the Southeast were cleaning up after Hurricane Helene, which was one of the deadliest storms in US history. And the vice president has been slammed for this. But that's not all. CBS News 60 Minutes is facing more pressure to release the transcript of Bill Whitaker's interview with the vice president after it aired an edited clip, which made her sound a lot better than she really was. But it seems that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is not listening. We are not gonna stop pursuing what is necessary for the United States to be clear about where we stand on the need for this war to end. The editor of the Free Press posted to social media, 60 Minutes should release the unedited transcript of the Kamala Harris interview. The Free Press also published an editorial over the weekend which said, given the stakes here, a rare interview with a presidential candidate a month before a very close election, you would think CBS would do the same, but no transcript has been forthcoming. The New York Post editorial board also demanded 60 Minutes release the full transcript of the interview. The editors wrote, with even the Harris Waltz campaign disavowing CBS's hack editing job of Bill Whitaker's interview with the Democratic nominee, the network's only hope of regaining any credibility is to release the full transcript. Sky News All-Star Greg Sheridan agrees, confirming that Kamala Harris's softball interviews have done her no favours. But one thing now is coming through. Kamala Harris's campaign seems to be in trouble. Is that true? <clears throat> yeah, I think that is true, Andrew. Um, I, I remain absolutely agnostic about this, whether this was an assassination attempt or not. In, in principle, I'd in be, be inclined to believe the local sheriff before I believe the Biden Justice Department. But nonetheless, it looks, <laughs> it, it seems unlikely. Um, the polls have got a little bit worse for Kamala Harris in the last week. She's actually done a few interviews, and even though they've been absolutely softball, she's been horrifically terrible. I mean, it's a very low bar to clear, isn't it, being able to just answer a question like you and I are doing spontaneously on TV. Uh, and she's now leading marginally in the national vote, but behind in the battleground states. And on current polls, uh, Real Clear Politics has Trump winning six of the seven battleground states and winning by more than 300 votes in the Electoral College. Now, if the, the polls the last two times badly underestimated Trump's vote, if they've done that again this time, then the election's already over. Trump's won by a mile. But I predict in a column tomorrow, the Democrats will give us a big October surprise, which I think will probably be some outlandish legal move against Trump, and they give us a big election day surprise because they're desperate to stop Trump and... Um, the polls, you know, they might not be underestimating Trump. It might be as close as, uh, as the polls say. And uh, it's, it's absolutely on a knife's edge, I think. Sky News All-Star Danica DiGiorgio doubles down on this, saying her media blitz failed at making her likeable as evidenced by the disappointing polls. And look, we know Kamala Harris loves to be down with the cool kids. She loves to give that impression that she understands youth. And this week, she burdened us with a series of fluff interviews. Have a look at this. If anything, would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? There is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of, and I've been a part of, of, of most of the decisions that have had impact. I have seen girls on the street walk up to men and be like, do you know where a tampon goes? Do you know how many tampons we use? Do you even know how, like, do you know what a X or Y or Z is of a part of our, and they don't know the answer. I was the first vice president or president to ever in office uh, go to a reproductive health care clinic. Bo, what is the Democrats' strategy here? That The view that she was on the Call Her Daddy podcast, why the fluff media? It is to try to make her like Anika, and they are failing miserably at that strategy. Kamala's own words write ads for Donald Trump. 
and he's using them right now. All you have to do is take Kamala at her own words. You don't have to say anything else and just run that over and over and over again, especially in these battleground states. And I gotta tell you, that strategy is working. Kamala's strategy of going on all of these different fluff podcasts and TV shows is failing miserably because I think I told you this, Danique, actually, one of the last times we spoke. Give it time. Just give it time. Let it marinate. And you will see, most voters will see, most Americans have seen that Kamala is a terrible leader.